I am so pleased to be here with one of the world's greatest filmmakers, Alanis Obamsawen, and we are so grateful at Nipissing University and so honored to have presented her with an honorary doctorate degree today. Thank you so much for being with Nipissing University. I'm the one that's honored. <laughs> I want to ask you a question you've, yes. you've made. You've had such a successful career. Uh, you're in your ninth decade and you continue to produce films. Yes. Is there a moment in time, an event, or a person of influence that really excited you, uh, inspired you to set out on this wonderful career of yours? Yes. Well, there are many instances, but uh, I want to say that I'm very touched to have been invited here. Uh, it's very special for me because of uh, Dr. John Long that I got to meet and, uh, and realize how much he's done for our people and especially uh, when he wrote that book, uh, Treaty Number no. 9. And I read the book and uh, I, I was doing research because I wanted to explain what treaty was because even uh, still in those years, when you talk about treaty to anybody uh, in the country, you say, well, what's that? It's finished. It's not important. And, uh, you know, our lives, uh, treaty is important to us every day. And, you know, what he did for the Cree people, all these different uh, uh, communities is just fantastic. And the first 16 film that I made was in Moose Factory at this uh, residential school. And he was teaching there, but not at the time that I was there. I think it might have been after, later. So the communication with, uh, with him, and uh, after reading him, and just to, uh, we organized a classroom here, which he did, we see him in the film was, I am so honored that you people have invited me here. I am so happy. And I know what Nipissing has been doing for our, our people. And I know that these are big changes and I'm lucky because I'm 90 years old and I can witness the difference in ed the educational system and in the country, across the country. I travel all the time in the world. Canada is at the front when it comes to indigenous people. I know there's lots more work to be done, but I am watching and I see what everybody's doing and I say thank you to everyone. And I tell our people, if ever there is a possibility for any students to do whatever discipline, look into your heart. What's the gift? What would you like to be? You can do it. Not only that, you're going to have a lot of help all across the country, even from the government, which is not something I could have said uh, 30 years ago. You know? So you've seen many things over the course of your, yeah. your life. Uh, and you've had very strong messages in all of your films. Yes. And so Nipissing University is on a pathway towards truth and reconciliation. Yes. We're working uh, with communities, partners, students on campus, more than 500 Indigenous students yes. on campus. And we will be establishing a treaty which will include wow. mutual responsibilities for education um, and, in, and having Indigenous knowledge in the curriculum and hiring Indigenous faculty Imagine and staff. That, yeah. uh, and so we have some, some promises that need to be kept. Yes. And I wonder if you could provide me with some advice on yeah. how to move towards truth and reconciliation. I think uh, when, when you have done a lot of schools in Canada, I think something that I find, is, is, but it's changing in the past was uh, a person who was Indigenous was always in the wrong place. The teacher didn't pay attention and often I know I was thrown out of school because I knew my lesson. So I know what I'm talking about. Um, for teachers who have indigenous uh, students in their class, when the year starts, uh, I, I always feel what's lacking is not listening to the voice. And I mean all students, but include ourselves also. I think uh, when you start the year, it's September, and you have many people of different nations or different race. Uh, I always feel the teachers should first, before anything else, hear all the students one by one. What is life like? What's their culture? What's, 
Who are they? I'm not talking just about us now, I'm talking about everybody. It doesn't matter what nationality. To be enriched, to not have a, an attitude of the teacher, it's the teacher that is going to decide. It's the teacher who knows everything and you're nothing. You do what I say. To hear, you learn things that uh, different nations, different people do because of their culture. To allow yourself and to make sure that you hear, I think that's what's lacking. To be able to, I, there's no way that I could make a film without listening to the people that are going to be. Uh, I do a lot of listening. And I learned so many things I'm still learning today. Just to hear the survival of anybody, doesn't matter who you are, everybody is important. Why? Because they have life and life is sacred. And me, when I'm working with somebody, I listen for hours and all those words are sacred to me. C'est la parole. I love to hear and what I learn, and that's what is the, the heart of any production I make. It's, it's the word. When I start uh, working with somebody, I will listen. They tell me uh, often their life story. And, it's just a sound, and they, you don't have to worry, oh, do I look okay here? Is my floor clean? You know, all, all those things. Because you're just uh, talking. And for me, I feel that when a person feels relaxed and in trust, they say things, you know, it's so touching. And what I find is uh, I describe it like a wave in the sea because a person will start talking about their lives. And sometimes people cry. They're talking about a period of their life that was very difficult. So the sound of the voice is, is so sacred because it changes. Then maybe they might tell you something funny or something regular, the everyday life. And for me, that's gold. I have Thank one you. more question for you. Yeah. If you could provide one bit of advice to our graduating students across Canada, what would it be? I think that uh, it would be uh, resembling what I just told you. I think it's to be able to hear, to listen to other people, not have judgment, and to, to follow because if you allow hate, to take over your life, or maybe somebody hates you. Tell yourself that's their problem. Don't nourish hate. It's the worst thing. It doesn't matter what subject. If hate is involved, for sure it's going to make somebody sick or it's going to make somebody very unhappy. Bring love in your heart. That's the main thing. And it's possible. You know, you're walking, maybe oh, I don't feel like doing this today. But you know, I teach myself and I say to myself, no. I feel good, the weather is great, people are wonderful, I am happy. I want love in my heart, I want to recognize what I have. I live, I, it's sacred, life is sacred. You have to recognize it. So don't allow hate to ever be part of anything. If somebody wants to treat you badly and, and hate you, leave it with them. Don't bring it into your heart. This is what I would say to everybody, all the students. That was a, that was a message for everyone, <laughs> not just her students. I thank you so much for your gift of time, your mm. generosity for being with us for the day. And uh, you really um, set the ceremony off in a good way. So thank I'm you. So appreciative of that. And it's I just hope that John can hear us. <laughs> it's been a pleasure to meet you yeah. and to spend some time with you. Thank you very much. Thank you.